Hello, I'm Risei, the head of IPRL this year, and I'm proud to showcase our team and our rover, Bobcat, which is developed in the Imperial College Robotics Society in Imperial College London. This year, the rover development is led by the Bobcat co-managers, Jie and Ashley. Our team has now grown to over 30 members across 11 subteams. On the admin side, the head of IPRL oversees everything, while the project managers ensure the development is on schedule. Procurement is handled by a logistics officer and the marketing team manages the media. On the technical side of things, the engineering teams handle the design, manufacture and assembly of the rover and drone. The mechanical teams work on their respective subsystem, with the electronics team supporting them on the electronic functionalities. The UAV subteam is focused on building an in-house drone. These subteams are supported by technical advisors who are experienced IPRL alumni that provide valuable engineering guidance throughout the project. Finally, the science team leads the development for the geological and astrobiological tasks. I'll now pass on to Jier, who will share more about why we're competing in ERC 2025. Yeah, so as mentioned before, we're a student society of over 30 people with a track record of some amazing student projects and student competitions. This is why we're all very enthusiastic about the European Rover Challenge, because it's an incredible opportunity for students to gain hands-on experience in the field of planetary robotics within an international and professional environment. This year, we've analyzed every single lesson that we've learned over the past two years of ERC and have been working really hard to implement changes to create a reliable and robust rover, which is our theme for this year. And that's why we're the most ready that we've ever been and I'm incredibly excited to pass it on to the rest of the team to tell you more about the rover. This year's driving system uses differential steering, a method that's proved highly successful during IPRL's first ERC. By removing last year's steering motor and drivetrain, we've dramatically simplified the system's complexity. This year, we've also introduced a fully modular design across all subsystems and panels to maximize efficiency in assembly. Every subsystem can be removed by each person within five minutes, streamlining maintenance on and off the course. With the suspension, the differential bar has been improved with metal plates, improve alignment, increasing range of motion. The wheels have been completely overhauled from last year, with the wheel size increasing, further axial constraints being added, and the infill pattern being changed. Wheel design was iterated and refined in CAT. The final design chosen is a PLA hub to promote rigid structural support and a TPU tire to allow for flexible deformation over small obstacles. N topology was used to achieve an infill density that varies with the distance from the central axis, allowing the rate of deformation to be carefully controlled. The wheels have been iterated and will be 3D printed using the printers in the robotics lab. Hi, UAV team here, the latest addition to IPRL. This year, our UAV is a standard quadcopter in a four-rotor X configuration, offering a practical balance between cost, simplicity, and flight performance. The frame is built from carbon fiber plates to ensure high stiffness and low weight. A modular design approach was followed for quick replacement of components. Landing legs were integrated to provide sufficient ground clearance for the downward-facing camera, ensuring clear vision during autonomy. They are also designed to absorb landing loads, protecting the electronics on board from impact. A central theme for our UAV this year is minimizing the mass. In order to achieve this while maintaining structural rigidity and functionality of the drone, we use simple standoffs for our board mounts, whilst bulky instruments such as the Pixoc have custom 3D printed mounts. Here's an example of such a mount which utilizes a press fit for easy assembly and secure stowage. For RE marker detection, we use the existing OpenCV library to get the marker coordinates and the IDs. The detection algorithm includes the identification of the markers and also error handling techniques such as tracing marker coordinates to reduce the effect from the sudden vibration of the camera. 
For localization, the drone relies on a commercially available optical floor sensor instead of a GPS. The sensor has a built-in firmware that solves the optical floor equation in real time, eliminating the needs for additional computation on the main flight controller. The sensor provides the velocity data, which then we use in a feedback loop to compare with the drone estimated movement, which helps eventually improve accuracy, stability, and autonomy. The drone is remotely controlled over Wi-Fi using our Unity-based app, which has two on-screen joysticks to control the drone. Additionally, it displays real-time flight data such as altitude, battery level, and GPS coordinates, and includes buttons to take off emergency land as a drone. The app uses 5 GHz Wi-Fi instead of 2.4 GHz to connect to the Raspberry Pi 4 to ensure minimal interference and fast communication. The Raspberry Pi then sends commands to the Pixhawk flight controller using the Mavlink protocol to drive the motors. This year's arm retained much of its structure from last year, with some additional tweaks for enhanced precision and robustness. It features five degrees of freedom, realized through a combination of telebuilt transmission and direct driven methods. The belt tensioning system has been updated to address the issue of slack and misalignment of the pulley belt in the previous version, and the wrist pitch gears have been upgraded to metallic instead of plastic to accommodate the larger weight of the new. The gripper uses a linear rail and a bi-directional lead screw driven by an upgraded servo to reduce wobble and improve accuracy. The gripper has been redesigned to be task specific. The sampling task gripper drawers are compliant to enclose the rocks. The probing drawers can either pinch or enclose probes and the maintenance drawers are thin with high friction skin and a nail. They can be swapped quickly. For the arm, we have developed a custom PCB that controls all the motors in the arm and gripper. Additionally, magnetic encoders are used to get precise precision feedback to be used for inverse kinematics. Finally, limit switches are placed at the end stops to ensure safe operation of the arm. The 2025 Drill and Payload Team builds upon last year's four components, the Linear Actuator and the Auger, whilst improving the ease of manufacturing the rigidity, the compactness, and the reliability of the rest of the system. There's some key updates on this year's drill mount. The distance between the auger and the mount is reduced. Through printed parts, keep things lightweighted and make it easy to test new iterations. Standard components are widely used for lower risk and price. This year, our payload system has been reinforced with rigid walls, ensuring minimal misalignment of the guiding shaft during operation. The payload containers have also been doubled in size to maximize the amount of sample that can be collected in the deep sampling task. The rover is controlled using ROS and the ground station connects to a Wi-Fi network hosted by a wireless access point on the CAM mast. The ground station as well as the single board computers associated with each of the individual subsystems will connect to this Wi-Fi network and allow the rover to be controlled from the ground station. The ground station consists of two components, the antenna mast um, and the suitcase. The suitcase has uh, basically a small computer inside, which will let us communicate with the rover through our primary ROS communication system, um, connecting over Wi-Fi and our secondary systems using LoRa and RF. We decided to use custom PCBs for each subsystem. This gives us a number of advantages, such as standardization, compactness, and ensure all our electronics meet our specifications. The standardization is particularly important because it improves safety with things such as connector pinouts and makes the subsystems modular, allowing us to iterate more easily in future years. The rover is powered by a LiPo battery, which is connected to an automotive relay to allow safe disconnection when needed. An emergency stop button triggers this relay to cut power instantly. For added safety, I2C temperature sensors monitor the battery, and current and voltage sensors track power outputs to ensure it stays within safe limits. And that's it for our 2025 rover, Bobcat. We hope to see you at the Mars Yard in August, so you can see it in action for yourself. Thank you.